All systems have assets, and security is about protecting assets. The first thing then is, to know your assets, and their value. In this unit, concentrate on database objects, tables, views, rows, access to them, and the overall system that manages them. Note that, not all data is sensitive, not all requires great effort at protection. All assets are under threat. The second thing is, to know what threats are putting your assets at risk. These include everything such as, power failure, and employee fraud. Note that, threats are partly hypothetical, always changing, and always imperfectly known. Security activity is directed at protecting the system from perceived threats. If a threat is potential, you must allow for it to become an actuality. When it becomes actual, there is an impact. Impact you can consider and plan for. But in the worst case, there will be a loss. An outline development mechanism is Document assets Identify threats Associate threats with each asset. Design appropriate mechanisms to protect each asset appropriate to its value and the cost of its protection to detect a security breach against each asset to minimize the losses incurred and to recover normal operation. Security skills from two directions. One is from the appreciation and awareness of changing threats and the other from the technical remedies to them. Unauthorized modification. Unauthorized disclosure. Loss of availability. This section is an overview of the categories of specific regulatory threats to database systems. Namely, commercial sensitivity, personal privacy and data protection, computer misuse, audit requirements, in considerations of logical access to the database, it is easy to lose sight of the fact that all system access imposes risks. If there is access to operating system utilities, it becomes possible to access the disk storage directly and copy or damage the whole database or its components. However, full consideration has to take all such access into account. To structure thoughts on security, you need a model of security. These come in various forms that depend on roles, degree of detail, and purpose. The major categories are areas of interest, threats, impact, and loss, as well as the actions involved in dealing with them. Security risks are to be seen in terms of the loss of assets. These assets include hardware, software, Data, data quality, credibility, availability, business benefit. Here, we are primarily concerned with threats to the data and data quality, but, of course, a threat to one asset has consequential impact on other assets. What is always important is that you are very clear on just what asset needs protection. So, as a summary, this is shown in the chart. Finally, you need to accept that security can never be perfect. There always remains an element of risk, so arrangements must be made to deal with the worst eventuality, which means steps to minimize impact and recover effectively from loss or damage to assets. The two guiding principles are Appropriate security, you do not want to spend more on security than the asset is worth, and you do not want security measures to interfere unnecessarily in the proper functioning of the system. A security model establishes the external criteria for the examination of security issues in general and to provide the context for database considerations including implementation and operation. Specific DBMS have their own security models which are highly important in systems design and operation the purpose of access control must always be clear. Access control is expensive in terms of analysis, design, and operational costs. It is applied to known situations, to known standards to achieve known purposes. Do not apply controls without all the above knowledge. Control always has to be appropriate to the situation. The main issues are introduced below. 
we are all familiar as users with the login requirement of most systems. Access to IT resources generally requires a login process that is trusted to be secure. This topic is about access to database management systems and is an overview of the process from the DBA perspective. Most of what follows is directly about relational client-server systems. Other system models differ to a greater or lesser extent, though the underlying principles remain true. The client has to establish the identity of the server, and the server has to establish identity of client. This is done often by means of shared secrets, either a password or user ID combination or shared by a graphic and or, or biometric data. It can also be achieved by a system of higher authority which has previously established authentication. Authorization relates to the permissions granted to an authorized user to carry out particular transactions and hence to change the state of the database, write item transactions and or or to receive data from the database, read item transactions. Discretionary control is where specific privileges are assigned on the basis of specific assets which authorized users are allowed to use in a particular way. The security DBMS has to construct an access matrix including objects. Mandatory control is authorization by level or role. A typical mandatory scheme is the four-level government classification of open, secret, most secret, and top secret. This section reviews some of the issues that arise in determining the security specification and implementation of a database system. This section is about the implementation of security with an SQL. The basics are given in SQL 92, but as you will realize, much security is DBMS and hardware specific. Where necessary, any specifics are given in the SQL of Oracle 8. For some ideas on ODBMS as distinct from relational refer to secure object databases, the DBMS will maintain tables to record all security information. This will include when SQL database is created and managed by the use of system tables. These comprise the relational database using the same structure and access mechanism as the main database. Removed. Treat these principles as abstract. Every country that has implemented data protection has followed these guides, but as usual the devil is in the detail. If you can be sure your database system complies with these, you have done well. Computer misuse, typical offenses, hacking offenses, simple unauthorized access, merely accessing data to which you are not entitled. The law is not concerned with the system's control per se. Unauthorized access with intent to commit an offense so you don't actually need to have succeeded just to have intended to do something to the database. Unauthorized modification, no one can even attempt access without making some changes, but the purpose is to penalize outcomes. Security plan. Identify the user community. Gather the database information. Determine the types of user account, that is, associate database objects, and user roles. Undertake a threat analysis. Establish DBA authorities and procedures. Establish policies for managing, creating, deleting, auditing user accounts. Determine their user tracking policy. Establish their user identification method. Define security incidents and reporting procedure. Assess the sensitivity of specific data objects. Establish standards and enforcement procedures. Generally speaking, when you log into a system, you want to be satisfied that you have logged into the right system, and the system equally wants to be satisfied that you are who you claim to be. The part of the process that deals with this area is the authentication server. There are only two ways to establish authentication, by means of shared secrets which include passwords and personal information as reported to and stored by the system. 
The result of authentication is a vector that contains an authentication identifier, usually with other information including date, time. Note that authentication is quite separate from access to database resources. You need to have obtained an authentication identifier before you start accessing the database. Authorization is permission given by the DBMS to use defined database resources and is based on the authentication identifier and a record of the permissions the owner of that identifier has. The identifier is recorded with the objects the user is allowed to access and the actions that can be performed on those objects.